Now today I'll be showing on how to test and replace a modern electronic throttle body. Now the easiest way to find a throttle body, locate the air filter. And I'll give you three different examples. So here on this Acura, this is where the air filter is located. Follow the airflow, and right here is the throttle body. Here's another shot on a Subaru and on an Audi. Just follow that airflow and you will find the throttle body. On many modern vehicles, you'll find plastic covers. So in this case, I'm just removing this cover so we have better access to the throttle body. Now I'm going to start by removing the throttle body from the vehicle. It's easier for me to film and show you precisely what to do, but by all means, you can test the throttle body while it's still attached to the engine. The second thing is you may be looking for that physical line that runs to the throttle body that you can blip the engine as it's running. These newer vehicles don't have that tangible line. These are drive-by-wire systems. Although this car is 16 years old, it's a drive-by-wire vehicle. So there's a sensor at the accelerator pedal. Depending how far you push down that pedal, that information is transmitted to the throttle body. So if you look closely, right here is the cutoff. So this is the top plenum. Right here is the throttle body. So this coolant sensor, don't have to bother with. This line, don't have to bother with. We'll disconnect the MAP sensor, and then we just need to remove the intake boot running to the throttle body. And now we're going to disconnect the harness connector running to the throttle body. There's a tab right here. Press on the tab, pull on the body. Don't pull from the wires. There we go. Now, also, if you look, we have two metal lines. This one, I can remove. This one is a water line, so it flows to the bottom. Chances are you'll find these coolant lines on your throttle body as well. It's to help in cold start warm-ups. Now really you have two ways to remove any rubber line without damaging it. First one are using these coolant removal pliers. You see how I can simply remove that? Very very easy. Option two Option two is using a pick and slowly just crack a little opening. Okay, something like that, and then spray some WD-40 PB Blaster, and that will loosen up the hose. As always, I'll have a link of tools in the description box below. Now, the other thing I have is a fastener. The reason behind that, once we remove this coolant line, coolant will come out. So I just want to plug that line. This may be a little too thin, but let's see how we turn out. So with the pliers, I'm just twisting. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. Okay, see, so just twisting and then pulling with my left. Just wear safety glasses because sometimes you can, the coolant will squirt up. Okay, so not too much coolant. And then, pulling back on the boot. If your boot is old, by the way, chances are it's going to crack. But fortunately, you can find replacement ones inexpensively online. And then we have four 12 millimeter fasteners. Okay. And then I also have one more water line. It looks like on the bottom here, right here. So I'll remove that. Okay, hold on, get this out of the way. Ay, damn it. Fortunately, we're okay. The camera still works, and also a very good time to clean out the throttle body, the carbon buildup, if everything works correctly. You could buy a spray at the parts store and clean everything out. Now, these modern throttle body assemblies, on your older vehicles, maybe you had two or three, really three prongs you'll find, and you can find the power, the ground, and the signal wire. These modern ones are just a completely different animal. So to make this as simple as possible, grab yourself a multimeter. This is like 25 bucks. Again, I'll have a link in the description box below. Plug in your red lead and your black lead. This is ready to go. That's it. So I just have these little test leads that connect to the end 
of the multimeter. So one will go here. Let's try these top ones first, touching the second prong. Watch the meter. And we have roughly 0.2 kilo ohm. Now try moving the butterfly. So just press down and see if there's a change. And as you can see, as I move this butterfly, nothing is happening. Nothing is happening here. Let's try these two. 0.35 ohms. But again, nothing is happening. So you want to do this process of elimination until you find some change as you move the throttle body. So I'll keep on going here and come back shortly. So it looks like in this case, the bottom two prongs are best. So one lead on the bottom, whoops, and the other lead directly on the next prong. Now watch the meter. Again, you could do this while everything is still attached. It just makes it a lot easier for me to show you this on the bench. Now, as I move the throttle or the butterfly, instant change. I'll close it. It resets to roughly 8 ohms, open, close. So there's a correspondence between the butterfly and the multimeter. This is a working throttle body. I don't have a trouble code. This is just a how-to, but this is working correctly. Now there is another way to test everything. Now this is another option, and what you'll need, these are terrific if you plan on doing your own auto repair. These are test probes. So the whole point behind these probes is that as the harness connector is plugged into any sensor, or in this case the throttle body, you can insert the test probe directly until it touches the metal prong and obtain readings as the vehicle is running. And as you turn the butterfly, that voltage should change. Now admittedly, this only works on older vehicles that tend to use a throttle position sensor. You can tell because the harness connector is small. It only has three prongs as opposed to six. So with those older vehicles or older setups, you can do that. The issue with a car like this or a throttle body like this is there's a motor built into the side of this. So when you turn on the ignition key, it energizes the butterfly. You may not be able to even turn this. The second thing is if your finger's anywhere in this cavity, you're going to have a really bad day. So it's quite dangerous. In fact, even the service manual states do not have, do not have your fingers anywhere in this area with the uh, ignition key turned on because you can get really hurt. Now two more things before we wrap this up. Number one, if you are replacing the throttle body, make sure you use a brand new gasket. Number two, let's say you test the throttle body. It's working correctly, but you have a trouble code. What else could it be? Well, it can simply be the wiring. So let's make sure that we are getting power here. So once again, I'm using my test lead and I'm going to test this wire right here, the black and the red wire. Just insert it, see how easy these are? Fantastic, now if you don't have these, you can also try using a paper clip. So my red lead running to the multimeter is hooked up to the harness connector. The black lead will go to body ground, that's any good metal point on the vehicle, so right here should work. Turn on the ignition key, and as you can see, we have a change on the multimeter. Everything works, the throttle body works, the wiring is good, we're okay. Now if you do this test, and you don't see a reading here, check the rear of the harness connector. What happens over time is you have uh, some lazy technician working on your vehicle and they pull on the wiring instead of the body. And that will dislodge some of the wiring and that will cause a host of issues. But if everything looks okay here and you want to look into it, you'll need something like a power probe or there's another tool that will find any electrical short in the vehicle, but you, you have to really start spending some cash and you may just want to bring it to a good garage. But chances are, if you have a trouble code, it's just the throttle body itself. So as you can see, really not a bad job. Two things very quickly. Number one, replace it with the factory part. I know it's tempting to save money and go after market. You doing this job saves you a lot of money right off the bat. And going after market, you may be doing this all over again in a few months. So take my word for it. Pay for the quality. You get the longevity. It's the right part. Purchase the factory parts. Number two, 
Once you put everything back together, turn on the vehicle, turn on the AC and let the vehicle idle for a good 10-15 minutes because the vehicle may have to relearn the idle, the vehicle's computer. Easiest way to do this, start the car, turn on the AC, just let it sit there for a good 10-15 minutes. That's it, you're done. So I hope this helps a number of you out there and as always, thank you very much for watching.